how to make your medical school application stand out. Hi, B1 Nation. Welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Ronza, and I am joined with my colleague, Meng. Hey. Now, we have nothing to sell you. It's just pure strategies and tips so that everyone has equal access to education. We have 10 minutes to tackle a new topic each week. And this week's topic is how to make your medical school application stand out. Probably one of my favorite topics. Now, we have Mm -hmm. 10 minutes on the timer here. Okay. Uh, Now, first and foremost, before I dive in and get Meng here to help us out, I think when it comes to uh, your application, one thing that I really want to stress here, it's very preliminary, but one thing that a lot of students overlook and undervalue is ensuring that you have a game plan and strategy when selecting the schools that you're interested in. You really have to do uh, your research, go on to MSAR if that's where the programs are, or go to the program website directly note down, you know, any statistics that they provided for you, what they're looking for. Uh, Are you within that uh, range for the GPA? Are you at least close to the median, which is what you want to target? What about the MCAT? Uh, Now, in terms of requirements, are there courses that are required that you have, or maybe ones you don't have? Are there experiences that they're valuing that they require or rather recommend? Very important to note this down to mitigate frustration down the line, but also to mitigate the workload that you have down the line, because, you know, you might apply to all these programs. And then when it comes to application, you have all these things to send to different programs that really eats up your time. So you want to make sure that your time is used wisely. All right. So now that we've stretched uh, stressed being strategic in, in selecting schools, let's get into the meat of it in terms of application. Meng, what's the first thing to consider when wanting to really make your application stand out? Well, <clears throat> okay. Well, um, there's multiple different components to the application and one of the most important ones and the most daunting ones to applicant is the personal statement because it's the longest piece of writing you have to produce for your application and for this piece of writing what you really want to do is first give yourself enough time to be able to brainstorm draft revise get feedback and finalize it. The biggest mistake that a lot of people make on this component and also other components is to not give themselves enough time and to rush the process. And as a result, what they produce is something that's riddled with errors and doesn't come off as professional. So so you really want to avoid all of that. Um, And the personal statement is intended for the committee to be able to see your motivations for pursuing this profession. So you want to make sure that you actually do that (laughs) in your personal statement, right? Some people will go about it and just tell a story, but they don't actually state why they want to pursue medicine. They don't link their experiences with that very important question that they're trying to answer. So you do want to make sure that that is made loud and clear in your statement. Why is it that you want to pursue medical school and the medical profession? Um, And then of course, We always tell our students not to list things out like a CV. A lot of people confuse this as an opportunity to tell their whole life story. That is not the purpose. What we advise students to do for the personal statement is just to select the two to three key experiences in your life that really demonstrate some of your core competencies as well as why you're pursuing this profession and to um, prioritize quality over quantity. Make sure you're giving yourself enough space to um, expand on just those key ideas. Those are some great points, uh, Meng. Uh, I mean, obviously time is of the essence, right? Like there is a rolling process. There is a rolling admissions for uh, most of you that know or don't know. And that the later you submit your application after, you know, admissions has opened up and accepting, the probability just decreases, right? So you want to make sure that you're not rushing it simply to increase your probability, but that you're just starting in time. Starting too late is probably the biggest error that we see with most of uh, the students. Um, and, and, you know, and you can see it, you can see it in their drafts, you know, they're rushing, they're nervous, and it's not their best, uh, you know, they're not their best work in terms of demonstrating who they are. And one thing I do want to stress here, and Meng pointed this out, is you don't want to dilute your application with too many, or precisely your personal statement, because there are other components we're going to talk about that you can obviously indulge in the other experiences, but your personal statement is your personal story, your journey, and it's very hard for the readers for admissions to navigate. Remember, they are reading 
thousands, if not hundreds of uh, these applications a day, and they're only taking a few seconds to even do this. So what does that mean? That means it has to be structured, it has to flow, and it has to be easily read. Right. And the biggest advice that we say for your personal statement is ensuring that you have that captivating opening statement. You know, we have and what we always stress here is primacy effect in that, uh, you know, uh, most individuals uh, remember the first few things uh, that they see or read. In that case, in your application, your introductory is very important to set the tone. And then recency, how you conclude, right? The last few moments of something is what stays with an individual. So that doesn't mean neglect everything in between. <laughs> Obviously yeah. not, but really pay attention to having a good structure, hone in on up to three, no more than three lived experiences that demonstrate your why, as Meng mentioned, and make sure that you're creative with your opening and segue. And then ensure that you have someone that could read this, revise this, and give you feedback. And please, I am emphasizing, be open to that feedback. A lot of times with our students, and I see with other you know, individuals in general, you get so attached to the wording. You get so attached to how you've written it originally that you cannot really accept feedback when someone says, this is a little confusing. Could you explain this? So be open to feedback when it comes to your personal statement. Revise, condense, and make it concise right? Respect the individuals that are going to be reviewing this. It should be easy to follow along. Yes, you know your journey, but for others reading it, it could be a little bit complex, right? So making sure that those transitional words are there. So language is important. Now, outside of the vocabulary and the grammar and the structure, let's jump into the activity sketch. Uh, Meng, what are, what are, what are, you know, few things that we can say that you have to consider for your activity sketch that you really mm -hmm. want to make sure that you stand out and you, um, you know, you put your best foot forward. Yeah, this is the key part of the application where you want to be demonstrating the core competencies that medical schools are looking for, right? So whether that's strong verbal and written communication, whether that's all those interpersonal skills, empathy, um, and whether that's problem solving, critical thinking, you want to be demonstrating all of the skills that medical schools are looking for in their candidates through the activity sketch. And the way you do that is obviously by selecting the activities that are relevant. Um, uh, and when I say that, I don't mean uh, only selecting medical experiences. That's not the case. In fact, that might not be possible. Many people don't have 15 medical experiences to put on their activity sketch. Um, but when I say relevant, I really mean uh, activities that demonstrate progression and commitment um, and also demonstrate those, those core competencies that you would find either on the school websites or on um, the AMC website you can find those core competencies there. Um, and let me just expand a little bit on commitment and progression because that might be a little bit confusing to you. What we mean by that is you wanna select activities that were where you were committed for longer periods of time as opposed to shorter periods of time as a general rule of thumb. Obviously there can be very significant experiences that were a little bit shorter, um, but generally you wanna select experiences that you were part of, you were engaged in for a longer period of time because that allows for um, more growth than you would have in a shorter experience. And growth is exactly what we mean by progression and experience where you're where you start off maybe as a volunteer, but then you move on to a committee member and then maybe a leader of some sort, that's an experience that you can really showcase growth in and leadership in, which is another core competency that, uh, another core competency that they look for. Wonderful. And uh, we have about a minute or so, and I want to highlight how to really break down uh, the structuring on some of these answers. A lot of times uh, individuals are carried away with the detail, but very quickly, uh, typically for any sort of experience that they're asking for, you wanna be brief and uh, explain the role that you had, uh, what your responsibilities were, what occurred and the result. If you can do this in two to three sentences, great. You wanna highlight uh, a reflection, right? What your takeaways were, what you learned from it. And then lastly, how it could be applicable to your future career. And this structure is, is really applicable to a lot of the questions that they ask that would really help you to have like a very mature response. Now, we only have 30 seconds. We can't go into everything, but I do want to emphasize that 
letters of references and or letters of recommendation also is very critical. You have to make sure you set some time to connect with your professors or physicians that you've worked under. Make sure you've established a great uh, communication and ensure that uh, they will provide you a strong reference for you know, the said experience that you're including in your application. That's actually time, Meng. So I think we covered a lot there. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed uh, making this for you, go ahead and share it with a friend. Subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Um, and of course, ask any questions in the comments section. See you next time. Bye, everyone.